welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today let us discuss about brugada syndrome it's a rare condition but uh, these patterns of uh, brugada syndrome we can see uh, in many of our normal patients brugada pattern and brugada syndrome are not same brugada pattern means ecg will have some changes similar to brugada syndrome but brugada syndrome means it's a combination of uh, ecg changes and cardiac arrhythmias and sometimes it may cause sudden cardiac death so many patients you can see brugada patterns in ecg that doesn't mean that they have cardiac arrhythmias the syndrome is a disorder characterized by sudden death associated with one of the ecg pattern characterized by incomplete right bundle branch block like pattern it is not right bundle branch block it's a right bundle branch block pattern and st segment elevation in the anterior precordial leads that means in v1 v2 v3 you can these type of changes it resembles a bundle branch block right bundle branch block you can see in this ecg there is rsr dash pattern but it is not typical rsr dash pattern it is rsr with an st elevation this looks like a patient who is having rbb with acute anterior wall mi most of these patients around 25 to 30% of the patients can have some family members have similar problems the commonly involved gene is scn5a that uh, is main gene which is uh, seen in uh, sodium cardiac sodium channel uh, in cardiac muscles now we can see the clinical features of brugada syndrome many of these patients are asymptomatic if it is an asymptomatic and we have ecg change we can tell that ecg shows brugada pattern syncope and cardiac arrest another important feature of brugada syndrome most common clinical manifestation is syncope and arrhythmias cardiac arrest also can occur in many patients even at rest or sleep patient can develop sudden cardiac death nightmares thrashing at night is common clinical feature some patients can have fever and fever exacerbate or triggers the clinical finding especially arrhythmias 20% of the patients can have associated atrial fibrillation so mortality in a diagnosed case of brugada syndrome this uh, for long term uh, prognosis is not good if the patient is not getting adequate treatment so mortality per year is around 10% if not treated or not diagnosed most of the time it is undiagnosed and sudden cardiac death can occur uh, during acute episodes of attack there is only one proven therapy for this type of arrhythmia uh, that is implantable defibrillator so we'll go into the details of different patterns in brugada syndrome type 1 brugada when we are talking about ecg changes without any arrhythmia or uh, cardiac arrest it is only brugada pattern that doesn't mean that patient can develop arrhythmias but we should be very careful when we start some drugs in this type of patients here what we are seeing is st segment elevation more than 2 mm in v1 to v3 followed by a negative t wave this looks like a rbbb pattern with acute myocardial infarction this ecg abnormality also can be associated with ventricular arrhythmias like polymorphic ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation many patients can have sudden cardiac death in the families family members can also have similar type of ecg finding past history of syncope can be there in some patients arrhythmia syncope 
all can be there in patients. So some patients may develop agonal respiration in the night time. So uh, all these things are not very common, but these changes itself are very, very rare. But some patients develop all these combinations of syndromes. Then we can call it as Brugada syndrome. So ECG here you can see, look at the V1, V2 and V3. There is a prominent R wave in V1, then S wave, then slightly uh, positive wave that can be taken as uh, RBBB like pattern, but SG elevation is there. Following that, there is T wave inversion. This is a typical pattern of type 1 Brugada syndrome or type 1 Brugada pattern. We can better tell it as Brugada pattern. If they have associated arrhythmias or sudden cardiac death or family history of sudden cardiac death or family history of similar findings, then we can call it as Brugada syndrome. Type 2 Brugada pattern is, it has got more than 2 mm of saddleback type SG elevation. You can see here saddleback type SG elevation in V1 to V3. So Brugada type 1 saddleback pattern was not there but ST elevation was there then following that T wave inversion here ST elevation is there following that T wave is upright slightly upright or uh, uh, it may be slightly normal so you can uh, get a saddleback type ST elevation so here you can see the ECG uh, there is uh, R wave then S wave then uh, another small R wave then SG elevation but that is saddleback type pattern you are not getting a properly inverted T wave in T wave looks like upright here so this is type 2 Brugada pattern third type is Brugada type 3 in that what we are seeing is morphology can be either type 1 or type 2 uh, there will be uh, uh, ST elevation following that RSR pattern but the ST elevation will be less than 2 millimeters uh, the type 1 was more than 2 millimeters here it is less than 2 millimeter SG segment elevation but whatever it is there is an RBBB like pattern with ST elevation in all three types now you can see here all three types are here first type RBBB pattern, ST elevation, T wave inversion, the ST elevation more than 2 millimeters. Second type, saddleback type, ST elevation following that RSR pattern. Type 3 is, ST elevation is there, but it is not very prominent. It is less than 2 millimeters. So, three types are important. So, Brugada type 1, type 2, type 3. Now, signs we have already discussed some of the patients can have cardiac arrest, some of the patients can have syncope, some patients develop cardiac arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, 20% of the patients develop atrial fibrillation, some patients can have fever. Most of these patients are asymptomatic. When we take routine ECG in emergency room, most of the doctors misinterpret it as RBBB pattern, if they come with mild chest pain, it will be misdiagnosed as RBBB with anterior wall MI. Now, lab investigations are very, very important in this type of condition. Any patient who is having a, a, a RBBB pattern with ST elevation, if they come with chest pain, we always take an ECG, we ask for cardiac enzyme. That is a must because uh, in a busy emergency room, uh, uh, we may miss myocardial infarction so it is better to do a cardiac enzyme and rule out myocardial infarction even if we know that uh, there is a high chance of Brugada pattern here but better to take the cardiac enzyme and uh, rule out a myocardial infarction uh, but a cardiologist or experienced physician may not do that but in a busy emergency ro room with a junior physician it is always rule out it is better to rule out myocardial infarction there. Now, electrophysiological studies can be conducted 
in this type of patients to look for any inducible arrhythmias uh, in this type of patients. Family history should be taken in detail about sudden cardiac death, uh, syncopial attacks, anybody is having ECG uh, changes in their family. All these things are important. Now, potassium and calcium levels should be done in all patients who is having Brogada pattern. That's a must. Hypercalcemia and hyperkalemia can have similar findings of Brugada syndrome in some patients. So we have already discussed that CKMB should be done to rule out myocardial infarction. Genetical studies can be done in OPD basis. scn 5 mutations should be ruled out. Now management is very simple. In emergency room, we will not be able to do anything for Brugada syndrome, but if they come with VT or VF, we have to go, or atrial fibrillation, we have to go according to ACLS protocols. We can treat the patient, whether it is VF or VT or sudden cardiac arrest. In sudden cardiac arrest, BLS should be started, cardiac uh, compression should be given. Then we have to, as uh, given in the ACLS protocols, we have to treat the patient. But implantable cardiac defibrillator is the best treatment for uh, Brugada syndrome to prevent sudden cardiac death. So that is a treatment of choice. But before that, we have to make a proper diagnosis by Holter monitoring or electrophysiological study and uh, uh, put the patient on implantable automatic cardiac defibrillator. Radiofrequency catheter ablation also can be tried uh, depending on the ability of the center. Now, some of the things we should remember is if a patient who is having a Brugada pattern in the ECG, it is better to avoid the drugs which is given in the chart. Class 1 means the evidence is very strong. We cannot use these drugs. So, like Edgmalin, flicanide, procanamide, propofon, all these things should be avoided uh, in this type of patient. And another drugs like uh, ametriptyline, clometriptyline, desipramine, lithium, all these things also can be avoided. So they they can sometimes produce uh, arrhythmias. So all these things which is given in these charts can be avoided in patients who is saying. Brugada pattern. So that we should remember when we are seeing Brugada pattern in emergency room. So we have discussed about Brugada pattern and Brugada syndrome. Pattern means only ECG changes there. Syndrome means the ECG changes associated with uh, history of syncope, history of uh, previous arrhythmias, history of uh, sudden cardiac death in family or other family members have got similar problems. So all these things are part of the syndrome. What we should remember in emergency room is this can closely mimic a patient who is having RBBB with acute MI, acute anterior MI. So it is better to take CKMB, troponin I to rule out acute myocardial infarction. Then we can hand over the case to cardiologist for a complete evaluation of Brugada syndrome. Family history is very important. Mutation studies can be done. Treatment is implantable cardiac defibrillator. Thank you.